Hi guys, it's me, Kai, and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so for today's video, I wanted to sit down and sort of reintroduce myself, introduce myself to lots of you. Um, I know I've got quite a few new followers. Whether you're here from the Canada's Drag Race announcement or from TikTok or Twitter, or you've just had the misfortune of being a longtime subscriber, I wanted to give you guys a chance to get to know me a little bit better. And for me to talk a little about my math background, my personal life, my drag, um, Canada's Drag Race, all the questions you guys have been asking. So I put out a call on Twitter and Instagram that I was gonna be doing this video, so let's get into the questions. Okay, me, myself, and Teeny, Tiny, Teeny, Mini, Mini, Mo, what was your reaction when you got the call to be in Canada's Drag Race? Sending love from the Philippines. Hello, Filipinas. I was over the moon, I was ecstatic, I was jumping around. As I'm sure you can probably guess, it was just so surreal to me. And it still feels so surreal now to be part of this huge empire and this family. Like, I still fangirl every time like somebody from Drag Race notices me and like likes one of my pictures. I'm like, oh my God. At Adora NV asks, what do you love about math so much and what made you want to start making your math TikToks? Okay, so um, lots of you guys are here from my math TikToks. I'm so like amazed that those took off like they did because um, I'll start by answering the second question first and then I'll get to the first. I started my math TikToks because, to be honest, I was feeling really, really depressed and bored out of my mind while I was in quarantine. And it got to a point where I was like, not even really inspired to do drag. I was really feeling like I didn't have many ideas to do for hair tutorials or sewing tutorials, and I just didn't have the inspiration to be making my regular YouTube content. At that point, I already had TikTok on my phone as an app. I was just not posting because I had seen so many like memes of it online at that point. The one that made me download the app was Snarky Marky. Ladies and gentlemen, the volume inside of this bus is astronomical. That was the one that made me want to download the app because I was like, this is just like, too precious. Not gonna lie, I was one of those people who fully hated on the app at first, but after being on it for a little while, I was like, okay, these people are actually kind of funny. And I just felt like, okay, this is like so my sense of humor. I should like totally make videos on here because I could be so funny with it. But I don't know what clicked inside my head and what gave me the idea to start doing math videos. I think I've just always loved doing math and I've always wanted to create my math into my like YouTube videos or any other part of my drag. But the few times that I have put it in my YouTube videos, for example, like when I'm like sewing dresses and I'm like, okay, you need to use pi to find out the length of the fabric that you need to cut to match the circumference of your waist. Like people have just not really responded to it and they didn't think that it was like cute or interesting. They were like, girl, this is too complicated for us. So I was like, okay. So I guess you could say the few times that I've like sprinkled it into my videos and tested the waters. It was just not really received well. So um, I'd never thought that it would work on YouTube, but the thing with TikTok that's so different is the short form video. I can really just put things out in very short bursts. And I was like, okay, so let me like come up with a few math riddles that I think are really interesting. And so I just put them out at first and then they blew up really fast. If you ask me, I would have guessed that the niche of people who are into both math and drag is like a very small intersection. I would have guessed that the majority of the people who are into drag think that math is too nerdy and the majority of nerdy people who are into math think that drag is too gay. But I've been very pleasantly surprised at the reaction. Truth be told, like, I have lots of interests and I have lots of things that I like to do, but math is really the one area where I feel I have the most expertise in. And I'm not a mathematician, I'm not an expert by any means, I don't even have my degree yet, but it's the one area that I feel very confident in talking about, very confident in teaching because I've been a math tutor to multiple students. Anyway, to answer the first part of that question, what do I love most about math? Um, I'll tell you what, I was sort of always a little bit good at it. I always found it a little bit easy when I was in elementary school and high school. I, I was kind of like, what don't people get? Like you just add these two numbers and like you just carry the two and you follow these rules. Um, but I didn't find it interesting or beautiful or elegant until like my last year of high school, maybe my second last year of high school. I started doing math contests because my math teachers really encouraged me because I was getting good grades. If you've never done a math contest, I'll put some in the description for you to go check out, but they're basically just like tests, but the questions are more geared towards problem solving. They're more logic puzzles, not like calculate the roots of this quadratic equation. I was okay at them. I wasn't acing them or anything until I was in grade 11 and I wrote the Fermat test by the University of Waterloo. And out of the 16,000 students that wrote it, I tied for third. 
So I got a very high score on this and I was invited to a math camp at the University of Waterloo, which sounds about as nerdy as it as you think it sounds. We spent a whole week doing some puzzles, doing some lectures to get a taste of what university was like, because at the time I was in high school and just playing games and doing like icebreaker puzzles. It felt like it was a little bit of a pitch by the university to get these bright students to apply to this university. I ended up applying to the university because I felt like this math camp really opened up my eyes to how wonderful math can be and how math can be so much more than just computation and numbers and calculations. And it can be problem solving, it can be proofs, it can be elegant and concise and rigorous. At the time, my career aspirations were a little bit hazy. I wasn't really 100% sure what I wanted to do, but I was going in the direction of theoretical physics and astronomy. But my grade 12 physics class totally beat that out of me. I was not really interested in string and pulley exercises. No offense to all the physics people out there, but it was just not the tea. So I applied to the University of Waterloo for math. I ended up getting a really good entrance scholarship that gave me a full ride. I was nominated by my high school for the Schulich Leader Scholarship. I don't know if you've heard of it. And I had to write an essay talking about um, some of my achievements and some of my leadership qualities. And that combined with the grades that I was getting in high school landed me the scholarship. So I worked really hard in high school for that. I was really hustling and trying to stay at the top of my class. I guess that brings us to the present day. I'm still a student at Waterloo. I'm only getting my degree at the end of the summer. I should have it by now, but I actually postponed my um, school for Drag Race. My school was like, what are you postponing for? <laughs> and I was like, I've got an exciting work opportunity, which is true. I'm getting my Bachelor of Mathematics with a major in Mathematical Finance, which lots of people think is like business and economics, but it's really just a mixture of pure math and actuarial sciences. So it's a little bit more math focused than like a business degree. To give you guys a couple of examples of the courses I'm taking, I took real analysis, I took measure and integration, which are both pure math classes. I took some actuarial science courses like financial mathematics, um, quantitative enterprise risk management. Before you ask me what I'm gonna do with my degree, I don't really have a good answer for you. I feel like I'm having so much fun doing all of this right now, especially now that I'm doing math problems on TikTok. I feel like that's like just been the best blend of all my interests and I feel like I'm using every part of my education to be doing those. So it's lots of fun. And I don't know what the future holds for me. Okay, that was a very long answer. You got a lot more than you bargained for, Mia. So let's be quick about these next questions. Who do you want to see on All Star 6? Um, Asia O'Hara. Can you speak Tagalog? Okay, let's get one thing straight here. Kayo ko naman mag Tagalog, pero medyo lang kasi bang, it's so much easier for me to express my thoughts in English. When I came to Canada, I was so young, I was like six years old, that I pretty much forgot how to speak my native language. And I, cause I was only speaking English for so long that I kind of lost the language and I didn't speak it at home very much. But then I became a teenager and like going back home to the Philippines, I would get like, like, Pang nahihiya ako na hindi ko kaya magtagalog with my titas and titos and pinsans. If I'm around other Filipinos for like a couple days though, I can be so good at Tagalog. Like, just like how Vulpix transforms to Alolan Vulpix, I go from Canadian kind to Filipino kind when you teleport me to a different region. Hi kind, huge fan from Brazil. When it's all gone with Miss Rona, would you ever consider coming to Brazil? I love you so much. I love you too. Thanks for the question. I would love to come to Brazil. Funny story, I actually started learning how to dance samba earlier on this year. I believe that's a dance from Brazil. I'm sure you guys will not hesitate to correct me if I'm wrong. I started watching Strictly Come Dancing while I was in the UK last year and my boyfriend showed me some videos of Shirley Ballas dancing to Latin music and I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I want to learn how to do this. So I actually started taking a couple of classes to learn how to do Samba, but of course coronavirus has put a pause on all of that, but trust and believe when this is all over and you guys book me in your country, I will come and do Botafogos all over Brazil. What queens would you like to collaborate with? Okay, I would love to collab with James Mansfield and Yuwa Hamasaki on my YouTube channel. All of us YouTube queens, I feel like we're the little Illuminati. Who is your Filipino celebrity crush? Okay, do you guys know Super Parental Guardians with Vice Ganda and Coco Martin? Um, the kid who plays Megan in that is the funniest little girl I've ever seen in my life. I think her name's Aura Bregalia. She's like my favorite person. Um, I'm also obsessed with Tony Gonzaga. And who was the one that played the princess in Crazy Rich Asians and the villain in Sister Akas? Chris Aquino. 
love her. Favorite math course you've had to take? Okay, I really enjoyed my measure theory course. I just felt that the concepts in measure theory came a little bit easier to me. And the best part about pure math is it is just so rewarding when you can complete an assignment and, you know, finish a proof. Like, high school math is a little bit, like, tedious and boring. But in university, the assignments tend to be harder questions that require more thinking. Like, you don't spend so much time writing down and solving equations. You kind of just think at it for, like, days on end. So it can be very rewarding to solve problems. So that's what I really like about pure math. Where and how did you meet your boyfriend? Okay, this deserves an entire video in and of itself, I think. But to make a very long story short, he slid into DMs once after watching one of my YouTube videos. We just clicked really instantly over DM and I've been truly madly and deeply in love ever since. Zayna asks, YouTube has been going well for you. What were the main reasons you wanted to be on Canada's Drag Race? That's a great question. I did it because I wanted a bigger platform. I wanted more people to see the stuff that I've been doing because I feel like I do pretty cool stuff and more people should be seeing it. And I mean, I just wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to apply myself to the same challenge that I was watching these girls undergo on TV. And I guess the other main reason was that I wanted to travel more. I wanted to, um, you know, tour different parts of the world because lots of you guys know me as a YouTuber, but maybe that's all you know me as. And I wanted you guys to see a different side of me and different talents of mine. What's your favorite dessert? Dairy Queen ice cream cakes are my passion and my dream for the future and for the children. Do you like brownies? Please say yeah. Yeah. Do you still stand art pop? Yeah. Okay, those are all the questions from Twitter. So now I'm gonna go over to Instagram. Okay, Goldfish asks, most horrifying slash gratifying moments on stage. It is always embarrassing when my wig starts to come loose, especially given the fact that I've done videos talking about how to secure your wigs. Anyway, comparing your makeup from when you first started drag to now, what has changed most? This is a really interesting question. I started out kind of just being a boy in makeup and doing like girl makeup on myself, I guess I would describe it, just like really natural fishy makeup. And then when I started wearing wigs and performing and doing drag, I really amped it up and I really liked the artistry of it that I just painted so much. And I feel like since then I've kind of toned it down again and brought it back down to here. It's just been ebbs and flows abs and ee What can you give about RPDR Canada without giving too much? Nothing. <laughs> Eve asks, any favorite UK queens or plans to come back here after Miss Rona? Hi Eve. Okay, 100% I'm gonna come back to the UK. I have worked with Saki Yu, um, Whiplash, Giselle, Cherry Valentine, all from Manchester. Adore all of them. Um, I've never worked with Blue Hydrangea in person, but I adore her. I think she is so talented and so amazing. Can you do impressions of your season one sisters? This is an amazing question. Okay, let's see if you guys can guess these. <laughs> Hello, my boba sexuals. How are you guys doing? Welcome to another episode of Baking with Boba. <laughs> Child. I'm island girl, my island body can't handle this cold. Hey party girls, just uploaded a new picture on my Instagram. It's blood orange era, so you know what that means. Go comment four words or more on my Instagram for the algorithm, or I will be forced to re-upload it and make you guys like it again. A fun fact about me is that I'm perfect. <laughs> oh my God, I love them all. Okay, I think that's a good note to end this video. There's a ton more questions that you guys asked me. I'm actually kind of overwhelmed. Last time I did a Q&A video, I think there were so few questions I had to ask myself some of them. Jokes, but not really. But maybe I'm gonna have to do a part two. So if you guys wanna see that, let me know in the comments. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram so you can ask me some questions next time I put out a call like this. But yeah, I hope you guys got a chance to get to know me a little bit better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.